Hello and welcome back to Let's Build. Today we're going to be building a castle on the slopes of the mountain over here. But the area is going to need some terraforming and landscaping to get everything right for us to build on. So that's first on the menu. We touched up the contours a little to give us a flatter base, and then it was time to paint down some concrete powder balls. Much in the same way that we made the mountains surrounding the world, we're going to be building a platform that's raised up from the valley so that we can start building our castle on it. The process is pretty simple, but it's made me realise that maybe I should put together some kind of instructional videos where I can go into the details of the techniques that I use, but that's something for the future. In the meantime though, flattening the tops was done with a cylinder brush, and then once I was happy with what it looked like, I could turn the entire thing to stone. So I've also painted some bits around the edge. There's a mix of gravel, andesite and coal all along the sides of this, uh, of this stone structure, just to make it look a bit more natural. And then I turned my attention to the tops of the rock, painting slowly at first around the edges with a small dirt brush and then moving to a much bigger dirt brush to fill the inside, just like a colouring book. And with that complete and the top greened off, it was time to put down some foundations. So I've gone back to my old method for mapping out how I want the castle to look. We've got some red lines here, red concrete, and that's for the big buildings. Blue is gonna be for the towers, and yellow for the walls that connect them in between. These are cool foundations and good guidelines, but nothing set in stone. Also, this is just the front end of the build. There's gonna be a lot more to the castle than these foundations, but we can get to that later. The first build here is one of the towers. So I think it's important to get your head around a theme for the whole build going forwards. The first thing you create is always going to set the tone for how you design the whole thing, especially with a much bigger build. So this mountain is mostly stone brick, framed with dark oak logs, and then with an internal core of cobblestone. You can see a quick materials test there to kind of test what I wanted to do for the rooftops. And in the end, I settled for a kind of like a steep red nether brick look for our rooftops. They're just red for the moment. Maybe later on we can brace these with some edging of like dark wood. But for now, it's a really good theme, I feel like. So with one tower done, we copied that and put it down on the other blue square locations. And then we move to the front. And this is going to be the forward-facing building of the castle, so it's got to look kind of impressive. It's just a large building at the moment of stone brick. It's not crenellated, it's not like super defensible. But at the moment it feels like a bit more of a decorative castle front building. And of course using that red nether brick roof like we have on the rooftops of the guard towers. The design is similar to before, but we're leaning heavily on stone brick and cobble, as you kind of have to with a castle build, because you're going to have huge walls and large structures. Stone brick and cobble, they're just generally a good mix. It may seem like stone overload at the moment, but most of the parts of the castle are going to be built for structure first, and then detail coming in afterwards. That said, again, I want to set a theme with the decorations, so I gave a detail pass to the front building, try and get it complete, before turning to the walls and uh, nailing the detail surrounding the outside of the walls as well. Again, I'm really happy with this cross effect that we have with the logs, cobblestone behind it, 
and then the stone brick at the front. I think it's like a good looking kind of mix of materials. Now there was a reason why I started working on detail here first. This video is close to 30 minutes long. And that's three times what I usually aim for with a regular build. Originally, I'd imagined that I could build this castle over several parts, like I have done in the past. But I realized that when you watch a video like this and you don't see the build complete in one video, it can be a little frustrating waiting for the next one. So I decided, you know what, just throw it all into one video and get the thing done. And that's pretty big. To put things into perspective, I record the footage at eight times speed and then I edit that footage and speed it up by three times again. And that means basically you're seeing me build 24 times faster. And then for even more perspective, uh, I think I went through about five seasons of Homeland in the background while I built this. But it's an excellent series, so it was well worth it. Now we've completed the decoration around the front of the castle. And so now it's time to build something on top of this front castle building. I really like the idea of just adding on top of roofs taller towers. It's a cool look that I think works. And so we have this weird kind of multi-stacked building at the front. And I think with detail it's going to look really cool. Again, coming around to the front and nailing just a little bit more detail here. We've got some pillars that lean out from the front building. Anything you can do that adds depth to walls and things like this is just going to be good going forwards. Right, boom. Phase one feels like it's pretty complete. So I think it's time to move inside the compound and start working on the interior. We've got a nice canopy that leans over the kind of the outside walls with that red there, the red and the dark oak that braces it. But I wanted to decorate the inside of the walls now. So we've got like a lower dark oak stair canopy halfway up the walls. And there's just some generic detail here. I used fences, iron bars and cobble behind them just to keep with that effect that we have on the towers, keep that theme going. And then moving to the front castle building and I put in a large window here just to break up that big flat red roof. And this is very similar to the kind of detailing that we did on the Castle Arundel, which is a build from years ago. Right, so next it's back to foundations mode. We need to map out in our head what the main buildings of the castle are going to look like. I had to connect the back tower that we have already to the side of the mountain. And then in the center of the castle, I wanted a huge foundation with two large square towers on each corner. Although getting the dimensions on those towers was a bit tricky. And initially I realized those towers were actually a bit small compared to the overall size of the building. And this is going to be the main building of the castle, the keep, if you will, and we'll call it the keep going forwards. It's going to be the entrance to the real internals of, the, of this entire fortress. And I wanted to stay away from crenellations here as well. 
Because this is going to be so stone heavy, you can use these red rooftops to really break that up. Some towers are still going to have those kind of crenellations, as you can see here. But we're really relying on the red nether brick to break that up. And so a sloped roof is going to connect the two main towers at the front of the keep. And the front two towers are going to have some simple crenellations at the top, like you can see. And then there's two placeholder pyramid peaked roofs that we'll come back to later to kind of touch up. They look a bit fat and they're a bit badly shaped. So I wanted a big tower right next to the mountain at the back at the left here. And there's not really much to say about it, it's just a generic tower. Now that we have the design of the front ones in place, we can simply just repeat that on all of the architecture going forwards. So similar to the front of the walls, the main keep is going to have buildings much like the buildings at the front of the castle. Which is just these tall, red peaked roofs, with cobblestone behind them, some logs for bracing, and yeah, just a very decorative feature. Anyway, now we're moving over to the side wall at the right of the castle. Now this is just a placeholder, it's something we're going to keep mostly blank. There's a bit of terraforming here. But because we're going to design a town to the right of the castle, like a supporting little settlement, we've left that wall blank and open for the future. So, there are three more big towers for us to complete. And we're going to do two big, thick square towers right behind the front of the keep. These are going to reach up from behind it and give it a bit more, you know, epicness. We're also going to put some really impressive detailing on the front of this, because this is where the eyes are going to be drawn. This is kind of like the visual center for the castle. So with that in mind, for the rooftops on these, we're going to go with a design that I've seen in a few places. Very small corner towers around the top, with a, a large pyramid roof in the centre. And I do think they look really cool. The story for this is it's going to be a sky dock, so you can see me there putting in like a wooden platform that in future is going to be a place for airships to land and kind of dock with the castle. Right, now we're going to map out the biggest tower of this build, the Showstopper Tower. And this is going to be a cylindrical tower, which is much more different to the square towers that we have so far. But at the moment, we just put that as like a loose structure at the back, and we'll come back to that later. So when you have a build this big, it's very easy to get distracted. I constantly found myself stopping after what I was doing, and then just going over and touching up some detail here and there. So a lot of the smaller detailing that will happen with this castle will happen off camera when just something tiny catches my eye and I zip over and do it. But when you're time lapsing at 24 times speed, you can't really throw in 10 second sections because I think they'll be less than like less than half a second, right? But here and there, the whole build at the moment is detail. We're hitting the internal courtyard and giving it a bit of polish, making it look super nice and finished. So a lot of the detail is just borrowing ideas like you see here with the walls. Keeping that idea of a wooden canopy with cobblestone behind stone brick. and some fence posts and iron bars for extra detail.
and also some detail on this front tower with these kind of like cross windows and a mini red rooftop for the entrance. So detailing the front towers and the front buildings was really fun. It's a real treat to be able to go three blocks deep with your detailing. And that's something you can only really achieve on a build that is of this scale, something really big. And the main door to the keep is something I'm very happy with. So when you build something on this scale, it's almost impossible not to change your mind halfway on things. And I constantly found myself wanting to go back and change something I'd already done. But you kind of have to keep the faith. Trust in the bigger picture. And you can always come back and change things when it's done. But primarily I just wanted this castle built before 2030. Also there's not much glass in this build. Castles and glass generally don't mix. Most of the decoration on the sides of the towers is just structural bracing. And where there are windows, we tend to use bars or fences. So the showstopper tower at the back feels a little bit disjointed and separate from the build. So I needed some walkways and things connecting it around the back of the castle to make it feel like it's something you can actually walk around. So we've got some tunnels going through the mountain there. Also, I think a really cool idea for this castle is that somewhere there's a shortcut or a secret passage that leads through the mountain into the Dwarven Fortress Erebor. So time for some detail on the front of the keep. I had a couple of ideas, two that I wanted to go with. And since there's two sides, I built one design on the left, one design on the right, and whichever one I was most happy with that became the predominant one, and I went with the one on the left. Right, now to the back tower, the big drum tower. Let's try and decorate that. But before we do that, I wanted to add another walkway that will connect us to the tower at the back. At the moment, this thing, it does just look like a giant ugly cylinder. I mean, from a distance it might look semi-okay. But the truth is, the only real way to break this up is to add lots and lots and lots of detail. So you'll see some strange yellow and black blocks on the right side of the tower, and that's really just like a, a giant ruler, like a measuring, a measuring stick. And those are tools really just to help me shape the detail. Right, now it's time to make this build truly unique. Originally, these faces on the front of the castle were going to be lions. But the towers aren't quite big enough for the manes of the lion, and uh, they ended up just looking like faces. So I altered my plans and instead went for like a king's head carving, complete with lapis lazuli eyes. And that'll give these faces like a really cool glow at night. copy and pasting once it was done, so we have two giant king's faces leaning out from those front towers. So yeah, again, weaving into the story, I'm thinking perhaps the king had twins. Maybe princes, two princes, and they're the guys in charge over here of the tower. I haven't even begun to think of a name for this castle though, so if you have an idea, drop it in the comments. So with the rooftop on the back tower, we're going to get a little bit funky. It's really hard to describe what I did with this rooftop. I mean, you can see me doing it, so I guess I don't really need to. But we have four shallow flaps on each corner. I 
and the center is a very steep spike that reaches really high into the sky. And I really like the look of this. We can really get some height on this rooftop and I think it looks very impressive. So with the rooftop done on this big showstopper tower, we need to ask the question, what is the tower for? And what is the castle in general? So this was always supposed to be a fortress on the side of the mountain used for airships and aerial combat. So I wanted to design the top of the back tower to be like a griffin nest, a place where scouts and messengers can land their giant flying beasts from faraway lands. So at the top here I built a few spaces for cages, which is where the griffins are going to live. And then one of the corners here is dedicated specifically to where these beasts are going to land. And I really like that idea, especially from the tallest tower of the build. So I guess it's like kind of like an Air Force castle, right? And if that's the case, we're going to need a place for things to land. So you can see that's why I've got like a sky dock leaning out from the tower at the back. And I guess this is here because we need somewhere for super important guests or dignitaries. You know, somewhere for them to land their smaller airships. And then again, just a bit more decoration around nearby that to break up this tower and stop it looking like a, just a giant tube. And that's really what this is now. We're doing a pass just to come around the castle and find the places where it just looks flat and plain and add some detail to make them pop. Also coming around to the front entrance as well. And of course the wooden platform at the bottom needs to look like a proper dock. So that's what we're doing here, logs and fence posts. As well as detail here and there. You can see a tiny bit of glass there. Now that should be okay though, I think we'll get away with it. And then some more detail around the front of the keep with another red peaked roof. Oh, and some flower boxes. Superb. And again, the cobble is still grey, like the stone brick, but I think it's different enough that it mixes up the texture enough. And also finishing up these walkways at the back by giving them a red nether brick canopy. Okay, right, so we have a tiny bit too much red nether brick, I think. And so what I'm gonna do is try and make these rooftops pop. And using the front roof as a guide, I framed the edges with dark oak planks and repeated that around the other rooftops of the castle. Also adding some iron bars and stone brick fences to the right of the castle here, on top of this wall. And so here's a look at those finished rooftops. There's also a cheeky chimney on the front of the uh, front of the castle. I like that. Plus, we also added an additional sky dock on the side of the prince's tower. And so far, so good. It's time to get building the courtyard detail. So if the castle has a dock, it needs a way to get things off the airships. So we're building a huge crane here on the corner next to the front tower. I didn't really have a design in mind, I just went with it. So this is a standard looking wooden crane. Although I did manage to nail a cool trick with the white log here, 
and I used trapdoors around the lock to make it look like the crane was kind of grappling onto them. And now the big question, what kind of courtyard do we want? Originally, I considered just turning the entire area into like a mix of cobble, moss and stone and going full military, just like an empty courtyard where troops could gather. But this castle is so fancy that I wanted the courtyard to be worthy of twin princes. So I put down a circle that would later become a fountain. I needed some more structure connecting the keep, so I built a, a simple platform over here on the right tower, and this has got some cool uh, stone brick archways leaning over it as well, and I think that's like a quite a neat decorative effect. And then when we had these archways completed and this nice little kind of ramp done, I could just flip it over to the other side of the castle and paste it down. Right, and now we're onto the fountain area. But before we slap down the water and the fountain, I wanted some more decoration around the courtyard. I figured a garden that braces the circle at the back would be pretty cool. So I put down a raised up area with some flowers and hedges and things and also a mini bridge that connects over between them. And once the vegetation was down, I thought this looked pretty sweet. I tried putting down a tree, but it looked a little bit out of place. So, onto the fountain. I wanted something grand, and the size of this castle means I'm allowed to reach pretty high up with the fountain, unlike the manor house. And the fountain also needs a little colour because at the moment, the build does lack a little bit of that. So I put down prismarine blocks. I liked the blue-green when combined with stone brick, and I figured that would make a great design. However, one thing I didn't realise was prismarine changes colour. It's something I'd never actually noticed, but when you watch the video, and it's a time-lapse, you can see it pulsing between blue and green, and that's really cool. I have no idea, but I don't mind because it doesn't look so good. So I also added some lapis lazuli into the fountain to help light it up. And with the fountain complete, a quick change to nighttime to see what it looks like. And the build is complete. With the Hellgate complete, evil is poised to wash over the land. I asked, who stands against the darkness? And now I have my answer. The twin princes of the kingdom have built this mega fortress in the shadow of the mountain, an awesome show of military might, and a staging ground to build a colossal fleet of airships to strike deep into enemy territory. This build has been super epic and super fun, and it's given me some inspiration now to build a giant airship worthy of this fortress. So hit like if you enjoyed the build, subscribe for more, and until next time, take care.